With a humble beginning, Grab became one of the leading super app to about 700 million people living in the Southeast Asia region. And in December 2021, this homegrown company listed the company on NASDAQ via a business combination with a spec known as Altimeter Growth Corp, raising a gross proceeds of $4.5 billion in the largest ever US public market debut by a Southeast Asian company. But since then, Grab's share price never saw daylight and investors are wondering what they have missed. Hi, I'm Frankie. Welcome back to my fuck show. Today, I want to talk about the rise and the fall of a Malaysia, Singapore's best ever unicorn that rocked the world. That year was 2012 exactly 10 years before the company got listed in the US. Anthony Tan and his partner Tan Hui Ling pinpointed the painful experience of taxi hailing in Malaysia. If you recall, it's either there's no taxis when you desperately needed one, or even if there were, the uncle never wanted to switch on the meter, which was frustrating because you knew you were paying through the nose. But what to do? That was our taxi culture in the past. And same goes for most places in Southeast Asia. A pain point to somebody is a business opportunity to others. While most of us curse the taxi industry, Anthony and his partner founded My Taxi. My Taxi is an app that allows commuters to book a taxi using just their smartphones, while the app uses GPS location services from your mobile devices and will use the information to locate any taxis nearby. On top of that, for taxi operators who never knew where their drivers were, with my taxi app, they could now locate all the fleet in real time. Imagine looking at a map on your screen and knowing exactly where all your taxis are and their movement. None of the taxi drivers would dare to take an extra Tao Hui break or Churi Tulang. And finally, if you are a taxi driver and always having to struggle and compete to get passengers, my taxi application can actually make your life easier. Now, you don't have to actively look for passengers. Instead, the passengers reach you through your smartphone using my taxi applications. It's truly a win for everyone and a service that makes the world a better place. At that point in time, my taxi may have been dominating the local taxi scene in Malaysia. But competitors such as Easy Taxi and ride-sharing service Uber were lurking behind with similar services. Personally, I preferred Uber in those days because I used to travel overseas quite often and having the Uber app means that I'm covered wherever I go. However, it's fair to say that my taxi had a way bigger taxi fleet spreading across major cities and also suburban areas, while Uber was concentrated in big cities like KL only. We are well familiar with how small animals are being eaten by bigger ones in the food chain. That's mother nature. But in the business world, sometimes small can eat big too. In 2018, My Taxi, a small Malaysian company which had been renamed to Grab by then, announced the largest ever deal of its kind in Southeast Asia when it acquired Uber's entire Southeast Asia business. This marked an important corporate milestone for Grab because that Uber acquisition came together with Uber Eats, allowing Grab, the taxi hailing app, to venture further in the food delivery business. With two key online to offline services in place, it was time to enhance and expand its suite of offerings under Grab Financial, including mobile payments, microfinancing, insurance, and other financial services for millions of its users in the region. 2022 has been a challenging year. Market crash, looming recession. But with the right knowledge and skills, you can turn this crash into cash, if you know what I mean. Just like Warren Buffett said, when people are fearful, you should be greedy. So join us on either the 10th or 11th of June, where we will share with you how to invest in the stock market and choose the right assets that fit you best. You can find the link in the description below. Now, back to the video. So how did a small company like Grab manage to acquire a multinational business like Uber? I don't 
No. The story goes a few years back prior to the acquisition. In 2015, My Taxi had applied to Kazana for a financial grant of $10 million to expand its business. But the due diligence process was lengthy and slow, sending a signal to My Taxi management that their chance to get that grant was slim. At the same time, perhaps Singapore's Temasek felt it could take the risk and having much deeper pockets, it went ahead to fund Grab at the time. Maybe other investors were forced more after Temasek's initial investments, or maybe Grab took the right move to be headquartered in Singapore, one of the world's most vibrant financial hubs. It became so much easier to attract international investors to look at Grab since. In a span of just a few years leading to the acquisition of Uber in Southeast Asia, Grab had garnered all the firepower it needed to take on Uber and continue getting more and more funding for investors in its business expansion journey. Apart from Uber, the other worthwhile story to tell about Grab was the acquisition of Kudo in 2017, an Indonesian online payment startup company. Kudo's most obvious asset is its hundreds of thousands of agents who use the app to sell things like prepaid phone credits, tickets, household items, and fashion online. In other words, the company helped to bridge the gap between the online and offline world, which makes it possible to bring digital services to new customers. Grab saw how Kudo could help its super app to be invincible. You see, Grab Pay in the past made very little sense for users to deposit too much money in the wallet because the funds could only be used for car hailing. If you want to stretch it further, fine. You can use it for food delivery service. But that service was not so popular in those days. By acquiring Kudo and integrating the two companies together, suddenly GrabPay now has added the capability to make financial transactions outside of its ecosystem. Like how we all use Grab e-wallets to pay for most things today. Many investors were confused by this move, knowing that the e-wallet business is a cash-burning, loss-making business because of the aggressive marketing dollars Grab needs to put into it to entice users to continue to use the payment service. Just imagine, if Grab stopped giving cash back to our e-wallets, very quickly we will find other methods that give us other perks when making financial transactions, such as reward points of a debit or a credit card. But as a unicorn startup, of course they knew what they were going after. If you want to find out more about that, check out this video over here. By the end of the decade, Grab was undoubtedly one of the most successful super apps in Southeast Asia. Every investor on earth knows who they are when Grab started trading on Nasdaq in the biggest transaction involving a SPAC. $40 billion to be exact. As I said in the beginning of the video, the listing will raise $4.5 billion fresh funds for Grab. The fresh funding will come in handy as Grab competes with Indonesian tech giant Go to and Shopee owner C Group for dominance in Southeast Asia's booming digital economies. The Grab story continues. With the acquisition of Jaya Grocer at the beginning of 2022 and the latest rumor of it being interested to buy over ANZ Banking Group stake in M Bank. It seems that ever since inception, Grab has never lacked of stories to excite the market. So why did the stock perform so, so badly? The problem with many of these tech unicorns in the market today Today is that very few of them are actually profitable. Most of them are chasing revenue growth with hopes that the revenue is big enough until smaller players are squeezed out of the game. In extreme cases, when all competitors are gone, the survivor can then monopolize the market. This is a long shot game. When the US and most parts of the world are tightening monetary policy, there's no chance, no mercy on companies that are trading purely based on hope. Hopes. Deleted. From its intraday peak of 13.59 when it started trading on 2nd of December 2021, Grab's share price suffered a whooping 70% loss to date. So, the $40 billion question, when will Grab be profitable? For the full year, Grab said it expects revenue to increase to between $1.2 to $1.3 billion, compared with $675 million in 2021. This improvement will come from a 30 to 35% increase in gross merchandise value and continuing contribution from Jaya Grocer. Apart from the improvements in its delivery and mobility business, Grab said its payment platform 
is gaining traction with the introduction of Buy Now Pay Later service. On top of that, Grab's digital banking business in Singapore is expected to launch in the second half of this year. Not to mention it also won a digital banking license right here in Malaysia in April 2022. See, after so long of explanation, all we get is how fast and how big Grab can grow. But still no mention of when the company will turn profitable. Nonetheless, it looks like Grab is unlikely to stop grabbing whatever that comes in its way to grow the business. As an investor, at times when the world is talking about a bear market, what chance do you think a company that was never profitable can sustain its share price? Tell us in the comments below. That's all we have for today. Hashtag fuck.